Hello everyone, hi colleagues, hi students, I hope you're well. I've spent the past few days learning about the uh, functionality and the potential for online learning technology and um, I gotta say it's been pretty cool, pretty exciting stuff that I didn't know about. So um, it's a nice opportunity. Um, I wanted to offer what I think are the most important bare bones fundamentals to get started successful teaching on Zoom um, that I found at least. And then after that, just a few additional features that you might find useful. So um, within that, I, I have a few um, suggestions for equipment. I have a few suggestions for audio um, features set up through Zoom itself. And, um, and then I have a few additional um, bonus features that might be useful for you and your studio. So by the way, I think this is going to be helpful for teachers and students alike. That's what I'm hoping. So let's get started. I'm going to try to breeze through this quickly. Bare bones um, suggestions to get started successfully. So first of all, run Zoom from a computer if possible. Not iPad, not an iPhone. Um, the reason why is because those mobile platforms do not provide the right audio settings that you need. The control over those audio settings that you need to have a successful private lesson environment. Most notably auto gain and what auto gain is is the software adjusting the input based on how loud and soft it is so it's going to lower the louds and raise the softs and you do not want that because that is the opposite of what we want in a expressive classical performance um, we want to hear the softs and the louds so I'll walk you through those audio settings in a moment but they're not available um, in iPad and iPhone. I don't think. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so first of all, sorry, my microphones are very sensitive. So um, first of all, you'll want to download the Zoom client on your computer, the app. Don't do it through the web browser. Um, you'll want the, the app on your computer. Um, second of all, I really suggest having an external microphone. Um, now, there's a number, you can spend as much money as you want on an external microphone. Um, my suggestion, actually it was a friend of mine who suggested this, it's called the Blue Snowflake USB Microphone. I'm putting the link down below in addition to other links for recommended equipment based on your budget um, and what works for you. But this is a $40 microphone on Amazon. It's going to be better than any internal microphone that you have on your on your computer or laptop. So um, the other option, a lot of you and your students have these handheld digital recorders, uh, whether it's Tascam or Zoom or Sony um, or something else. But you can use that as a pass-through microphone that you can connect to your laptop and use uh, in your lessons. It's not just for recorded audio, but also you can use it as a microphone to pass through. You might need to purchase an additional USB cable. I think there's seven bucks. If I can find the link, I'll paste that too. Um, but it's uh, it's very useful. And um, also headphones. I recommend headphones instead of speakers um, only because you can avoid that feedback loop where your students are hearing their own audio coming back to you, uh, coming back to them through your speakers. So you want to avoid that. Uh, I'll paste some headphone links down below as well. And I think you'll probably want open ear headphones instead of closed ear. Open ear, it's pretty comfortable to play um, what with them on so you don't have to keep taking them on and off during a lesson. Um, okay, so let's jump right into the audio settings. I'm going to try to breeze right through these. Um, these are the main settings that I found to be really useful. So when you download Zoom and then you open the app, up here, settings, top right, click that. Go ahead and go to audio and then go right down to advanced. We'll come back to this page, go to advanced for now, and then enable original sound. You want to check this option. It's very important to check this option. Also, make sure that these two options are disabled. Suppress persistent background noise, disable. Suppress intermittent background noise, disable. Okay, going back. Um, so whether or not you have your external microphone right now, you want to uncheck this, automatically adjust microphone volume, okay? This is the auto gain I was talking about. You do not want this selected. You want 
the uh, zoom to represent the dynamics that you or your student are um, are playing accurately instead of adjusting them um, depending on how lo loud the, the signal is um, okay and then once you have your your external microphone or even if you don't have the external microphone you're going to want to adjust your input volume so that your loudest dynamics are not distorting the input level so I would test this by positioning the microphone where it's going to be during the lesson uh, I wouldn't play directly in that microphone I would um, depending on on your room and your instrument uh, maybe offset just a little bit and a few feet away four feet or so I, I, I'm not an audio engineer but four feet let's say that and um, you will want to play your loudest that you'll play in the lesson and then adjust your input volume based on that if you're maxing out or distorting you'll want to lower the input volume it's also worth noting that first adjust the input volume on the device itself if you have those controls so whether that's a digital recorder like your Tascam or Zoom recorder those have uh, menu options for um, for level adjustment or gain adjustment if you have an interface that you're running your mics through like I do I can show you that in a minute um, adjust your levels there as well um, and then you can select your microphone here once you have it here you'll see built-in microphone this is the laptop's microphone but I am running through duet which is the audio interface through which my microphones are running um, so that's important here you can also select your audio out so your speakers or hopefully your headphones and in this case it's going through my audio interface as well uh, that's where my headphones are connected so um, those are the audio settings that are important um, once you have done all of those and then you launch your first uh, zoom meeting after those settings are in place you'll see this option here it'll say turn on original sound you'll want to click it so that original sound is on right now it is on because my option is to turn it off also you can select the microphone that you're using to tell the to tell zoom that whenever it senses that microphone is connected uh, turn on original sound so that's what I've done here anytime I have my audio interface connected um, it will turn on the original sound and original sound is just it's the best option for classical uh, for well acoustic uh, music so uh, let's talk a little bit about mic placement now I'm gonna try to go through this quickly and while I talk about that I'm gonna bring up a new another great feature uh, which is screen sharing so if you click share screen down here uh, within the zoom meeting you'll see this option for iPhone or iPad via AirPlay which is really cool uh, why is it cool because you can use that to look at sheet music so you'll see the instructions which are pretty clear here and then once you follow the instructions you are mirroring the iPad which is pretty awesome and wh while you mirror the iPad um, if you're pointing something out to your student like don't mess that that bar up or that notes out of tune every time <laughs> um, and the student will see exactly what you're doing which is really cool um, but the reason I got this iPad out is to show you my setup so let's do it okay this is what I'm working with this is my setup so my speaking microphone is here it's very close to where my mouth is and I also have a playing microphone and depending if I'm playing or speaking I uh, switch microphones on my interface which is this thing by the way this is my audio interface it plugs directly into my computer my microphones are plugged in here these are my t two microphones and it goes through the interface into the computer um, and I have one for speaking and one for playing so that's my setup 
So you don't need two microphones, but I mean, if you can, if you can swing it, it's great. You, you'll get a, you'll have a great setup, and it'll be uh, really nice to be able to switch back and forth between playing and speaking. But um, if you're going to use one microphone for speaking, make sure you're close to it to speak, and make sure you're not overloading it when you're playing. So don't play right into it. Find the sweet spot in the room to play. Maybe you can just kind of swivel in your chair and play off to the side. But just to demonstrate um, the difference between the microphones, um, so you'll see here, I, um, I've i muted my playing microphone. But if I unmute that and instead mute my speaking microphone, then I can go ahead and play and it'll be the levels are already set in a way that uh, is perfect for when I'm playing. And then I can switch back to speaking pretty easily. It's, it's pretty seamless. Um, so, yeah, I'd recommend finding that sweet spot. If you're using one microphone, speak closely and then play in a way that's uh, not overloading that microphone, but still present. Um, okay, those are the bare bones uh, features that I wanted to talk about. Uh, now to get to the um, uh, additional functionality and really cool things that um, that I've researched and I've actually had some help. One of my DMA students figured this out. Um, let's talk about Facebook Live integration. And uh, the cool thing about this is you can live stream a Zoom uh, meeting to Facebook, whether it's um, for the purpose of just being within your, maybe you have a private studio uh, Facebook group. Um, I have one, and we, uh, we've already done a couple Facebook live streams through that group, and it's pretty cool. Um, or you could live stream it to a public group. We also have a, a UNT Trumpet uh, public Facebook page. So you could live stream it uh, to there as well. Um, or you could live stream it to the whole world, which is, is really great. You can use it for things like master classes with guest artists. You know, you can get the principal of Berlin Philharmonic on live stream. Uh, they're not doing anything now anyway. All their concerts are canceled. Why won't they join for a virtual master class? You could do a warm-up session uh, just for your studio. And yes, you could do that just within Zoom and have everyone come into the meeting. Um, I found that it's a little chaotic and gets overloaded and the sound quality suffers that way. So if you wanted to, to just maybe broadcast yourself on Zoom or yourself with a guest through Zoom but broadcast live on Facebook for an audience of your choosing, then that's a really cool option. So just to show you that menu option. Credit goes to my student, Aaron Jensen, who figured this out for me. So um, what you'll want to do is go back to settings and then under general, you go to more settings. And once you do that, if you scroll down far enough and you'll find it if you scroll, I'm going to search, allow live streaming meetings and you select it and then you can select Facebook. And once you select that, then down here under more, you can go ahead and select live on Facebook, which is really cool. Um, it won't l allow me to do that now since I'm recording, but uh, it works. I've done it already a couple of times. Once you click this, it will guide you through a few prompts. You'll have to sign in to your Facebook account, and then you'll be able to choose where you want to live stream your Facebook. Uh, live stream the the meeting whether it's your profile or a page that you manage or a group that you manage um, they're all possible so the possibilities are pretty cool and it's it's great for community building especially in these times when people are just stuck at home with not much social interaction um, I think in the past three days we've already had um, about <laughs> three or four um, live um, trumpet hang hangouts basically 
Some of them were just through Zoom. One of them was just through Zoom, and then a couple were th on Facebook as well. Um, so that's pretty neat. Another um, another setting I'd like to mention: one, you if if you choose to have a studio class within Zoom, then um, in that same setting page that we just accessed to 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 access the live streaming option, um, if you find if you scroll and find it or search for mute, mute participants upon entry. So if you have a meeting um, at 7 p.m. for studio class on Zoom and students come late, this is important to select so that when they come in, they're not making a bunch of noise when someone else is playing, for example. So, um, And then you can choose whether to unmute them or if they, uh, if they can unmute themselves as well. So that's, that's a really important option as well. Um, other than that, one more option I'd like to mention. It's also within share screen. Um, if you go to share screen here and go to Google, Chrome, or whatever uh, internet browser you have and enable share computer sound, then f let's say you are in the mid middle of a lesson with a student and you want to reference a recording, you can do so here and you can both watch the same video with sound, um, which is really, really useful. So I've I found this pretty useful already. And it sounds pretty good. Anyway, so that's a little bit of screen sharing, which is um, which is really cool. Other than that, um, I'm going to include some links to some suggested equipment. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but um, hopefully it'll it'll help you wherever you are, whatever your budget is, whether you're a student or teacher. Um, but um, yeah, microphones, mic stands. If, if you decide to get some microphones that require an audio interface, then you'll need to purchase an audio interface. So for example, if you were to get a, a setup similar to this, you could get a couple of Rode NT5 microphones for $210 each, but you'll also need to get a couple of mic cables, a couple of mic stands, an audio interface, which runs about 150, 160 bucks, and then you'll be set. But given that it looks like we might be um, doing a lot of online teaching from now on, uh, this is a really great investment I think and um, and it's gonna really enhance the online learning environment so all the best of luck hope you guys stay safe and uh, it's been pretty cool to, to learn about this honestly it's been a, a lot of research and a lot of help from from students and uh, and other colleagues but um, hopefully this is a little helpful um, somewhat helpful to you guys and uh, yeah good luck thanks